Rahim reports that Kharkiv is under aerial attack from Russian paratroopers. Uh, let's now speak to a resident there, Maria Avdiva, who is in that city. Maria, thanks for taking the time and talking to us. How, how are you feeling? How, how would you describe the whole situation and the weight of the world on your shoulders? Hello, thank you for having me. So the situation here is really dangerous now and threatening. Uh, for the, so during yesterday, uh, Russia uh, continued shelling uh, the residential area, so deliberately destroying the houses. And they did it throughout the day and in the night as well. So people were not able to go out and were hiding in the shelters and the basements and in, in, in the underground. And besides, uh, uh, Russia started to use uh, fighter jets uh, to bombard uh, Kharkiv. So uh, you, you could have clearly uh, hear uh, in the evening and during the night the sound of the bombarder, flying, uh, fly, bombarder jet flying near the house and uh, then the, the explosions all over the city. And now we have seen that so many uh, houses are damaged uh, in ruins and we do not have any numbers yet about the confirmed uh, deaths among civilians, but there are so many. And uh, uh, they also striked the uh, dormitories of the cadets of the uh, military universities here in Kharkiv, because it's a large city and we have uh, two military universities, tank and uh, tank school and um, air uh, flighters school. So they they, they bombarded the, the places where the cadets sleep uh, and uh, they, it continues because in the morning I still hear the sounds of explosions throughout the city. Uh, so now people try who, who you know can no longer stay here try to flee the city because uh, now there are so many uh, uh, so many houses destroyed and people do not have place where to stay here and also of course uh, it's needed to mention that there are shortages of food supplies of water supplies of medical supplies because uh, uh, the city is under constant uh, uh, aggression uh, from Russia. Uh, and about the uh, paratroopers, uh, I, 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 uh, I have no uh, detailed information yet because it was happening during the night. And some do confirm, some sources say that the attack was uh, uh, quickly uh, fight back and the, so the, the, uh, the hospital where these paratroopers tried to to get into so the military hospital it is under full control of the ukrainian military so i think that we will have the detailed information later the, today yeah and maria just hearing you speaking and whilst you're speaking seeing those pictures of your proud and fantastic city reduced to rubble and um, unimaginable just one week ago and you so composed talking to us this morning you must personally be incredibly frightened that your own home could soon be uh, reduced to rubble in the way that we've seen so many in the last week why have you decided to stay you know, I am not frightened. I am really angry, and that is what I see in the eyes of Ukrainians. Because that, that you know, deliberate killing of children and uh, women uh, which sleep in their houses—that is the war crime. And Putin is a war criminal. And what I want is as soon as possible to make him responsible for that. Him and all his commanders who give these orders, who sent here troops. So I now you know, uh, stay in the corridor uh, so that I have two walls, uh, uh, one which is outside wall and one is, is inside the, the apartment. So if the, uh, the, the strike uh, gets, uh, the rocket gets into the house. So uh, I am hoping that uh, I will be inside, but then, of course, you never uh, can feel secure here. And uh, the, the, the most uh, dangerous consequences are that they are bombarding also critical infrastructure in the city. I already know that some uh, of the houses which were not hit by the rocket, but they do not have any heating at the moment. Also, they will for sure try to destroy electricity infrastructure, water infrastructure. So uh, that means that the city might, uh, which is one and a half million, and it 
it's a large city, second largest city in Ukraine, might remain without the uh, you know anything, uh, any any necessities and especially uh, the the heating, which is um, most important now because it is cold outside. Um, and, and those paratroopers landed on the ground, I mean, their role, part of it will be to secure uh, essential services and, and, and put it in the hands of the Russians as well. So what they don't destroy, they will control. Um, Maria, um, so difficult listening to you, talking to you. We wish you well. Please keep safe. And thank you for your time. Thanks for telling us your story this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's my Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Okay.